One question I get quite often is, how do you set up Alarm Manager and how does it work? And what are all the different things you can do within it? So in this video, we'll take a quick look, we'll have a deep dive into Alarm Manager and we'll get some things up and running. So let's jump straight to the dashboard and have a quick look. So when you go into Unify Protect, you're generally greeted with your dashboard and down the bottom right here in the left-hand corner, you have the alarm manager. And when you click on here, you're greeted with a whole bunch of alarms are here. Now, initial look of this can be quite daunting about how does it work? What does each of them do? But it's actually quite straightforward once you break it down. So let's take a look at the dashboard first. So we have select devices in the top left-hand corner right here. And you can choose any of the cameras or sensors that you have set up to see what alarms and triggers you have. For example, if I have the studio door, we can see we have certain alarms. And if I untick it, we get them all again. So if I want to look at the front driveway, I know these are linked to it, et cetera, et cetera. Next, we have the create alarm button. And because I'm zoomed in, these are normally on the right hand side, but because I'm zoomed in, they're right here. We have a reset. So if you've been playing around with alarm manager and you've broken something and you just want to reset them back to factory settings without restoring Unify Protect, you can click that reset button and it will reset all of them. We have mute my notifications. So you can do this for a certain amount of time. So 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, four hours, till tomorrow, next week, or even choose a custom time if you wish to do so. Then we're greeted with the whole bunch of alarms that are down here. So we have the name and trigger. So you can give it a name and you can edit these. You have the action type, you have the number of hits. So how many times it's been triggered in the last 24 hours, when it was last triggered, who it was created by. I set up Unify Protect, so it's probably been created by me. We have my notifications and you'll see two buttons on here. We can either get the push notification to your phone or we get the email. And if you tick both of them like this, you'll be greeted with an email and a push notification. Or if you untick both of them, you don't get any. Or if you just have one, it will tell you you'll get the push notification. You can choose when to send it. So you can have it as always, customize schedule, offsite and never. And what offsite basically means is you get your notifications when you or all of your admins are more than 200 meters away from the Unify console. So this is the geolocation. Now, in terms of the notifications themselves, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can go ahead and create a brand new alarm or you can go and click on one of these and edit the existing alarm that's there. And third one is you can scroll down to the bottom of the alarm and then do a duplicate. So if there is something that you want to set up, which is very similar, for a different type of camera, maybe getting someone different notified on there, you can go and just duplicate it and get that done that way. Let's start with creating an alarm and we're gonna call this IW Demo Test Alarm 1. And we'll go through the three different steps that you need to get this set up and all the different ones you can choose within. So first thing is you have the trigger and there's so many different things you can do in terms of the trigger. So we'll quickly run through these one by one and have a look at all the different ones that are there. So we have the face ID, and within this, you have unknown faces, known faces, person of interest, or a specific face. Now, the way it picks up the specific face or person of interest is when you go to the faces. When you go to the faces, you have all of these options just in the top right hand side here. So we have all, known, unknown, and person of interest. So when you go back to the alarm manager, if you want the person of interest, you can tick that and that will then select the person of interest. We also have the license plate recognition, which is the same thing, unknown, known vehicle of interest or a specific vehicle. And again, when you go to the car and then vehicles and license plate, you have the same thing, all known, unknown and vehicle of interest. So you have all those options too. Then you can be a bit more generic if you want and you can get some objects. So it can be a person or a vehicle or a package, an animal, or even the AI key enhanced. So this is using the AI key. You can put something in here like, I wanna be triggered when there's a person wearing a hoodie, for example, with a 70% confidence match, and then it will create a trigger based on that. So you really have a lot of flexibility when you set this up to do what you want to do. You then have an activity. So if you have any line crossing set up, you can trigger it using that way. Loitering, if they'd have an M NFC card scan, a fingerprint scan, ring, sound, or even motion. So if it's in a quiet area and you want to be triggered when there's a sound there, you can do that too. We have the sensors. So these are these little UP sense sensors that we have, and this is what we're going to be using as our demo today. So we're going to go and do this in just a second. So we're going to actually select status open or closed. If there's a motion, extreme values, water leak, alarm detected or low battery. And then finally we have system. So a lot of these, again, you don't have to create all of these individually. A lot of these are already created for you in that big list that you're looking at. So we have all things around devices, admin access, recording, geofencing, the settings, et cetera, et cetera. So when there's an open status change close and when there's an object with a person and there's this option right here. So within the number of seconds. So 
At the moment, this is limited to 60 seconds. So if I try and do 90 seconds, it tells me at the top, you can set this up to 60 seconds. So it has to be fairly quick. It can't be within five minutes or 10 minutes. And then finally you have the schedule. So you have always, or you can have custom. And these are some of the ones that we saw earlier. You literally just click the plus button as to where you want this to be triggered. So for example, if it's a building site and it's a Monday to Friday, nine to six, then you can go and set it up for those specific times. For now, we'll leave it as always. And then we have our scope. So this is the second thing we would move to. So we've chosen the trigger, whether it's a vehicle, person, action, whatever it might be. And then we have include and exclude. Now you might have a list of about 30 or 40 cameras or sensors, and you find that you might just want to exclude one. You don't want to exclude all of them. So rather than going through and ticking 39 odd cameras or sensors, you can just go and exclude a couple and everything else will be included. But in this example, we're just gonna click include and we're gonna select both of them for the time being. And uh, this will be the same with the camera. One thing also I will show you is when you change the scope to a license plate person or camera and you actually select some sort of camera action, it shows you if you have multiple zones set up, it will show you here. So you don't have to activate this in all the zones. You can select specific zones that you want to be triggered in. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you are setting it up with a camera. And the final part is action. So what happens, you've picked the trigger, you've picked the scope. So what do you want it to do? You have a few different options. You can get it to notify you. And if I click on here, there's a whole list of users on there that you can have it sent to, and we can use a custom context. So you can do a custom context and I'm gonna put there, someone's opened your door, or you can just leave it as a default, which will say this has been triggered. We have a webhook, which we're gonna look at in just a second. We have the unlock function. So for example, if you're driving onto your driveway and you've got the license plate detection as your trigger, you can go and open up your garage door and that will then open automatically for you once it's picked up your license plate, which can be perfect for someone that is going in and out all the time or someone that just doesn't wanna go out or if you, have a, if you don't have a fob in your car to be able to open it, then this is perfect for you. There's a sound functionality for the AI horn, which I don't have just yet. So some of those detections that you saw in their release video where they speak about the horn, you can use that in terms of the sound. You then have a light feature. Now this can be used with the floodlight or in this case, actually it's used with the G5 PTZ camera. So again, if you're coming onto your driveway, I'm using this as an example, or you're pulling into an office and you want the G5 PTZ light to come on, you can set this and you can set the duration and however long you want that. And also you have your presets. So again, with a PTZ model, you can get it to choose face the front or the sides. When you're driving into the office, for example, and you want it to change direction, you can get it to do that and it will go back to home after a little while. So for now, we're gonna set up this and we're gonna say someone's at your studio door. And just like all the other ones, you can actually add a second action. So I want it to notify me and I want it to do a webhook. Now, if you've not seen this before, I've done another video on this where I actually used the sensor to trigger something within Home Assistant. So you can go and check that out. I'll leave a link down to that video and at the point where I'm testing it down in the description below, you can go and check that out. That's just a custom webhook, but I'm just gonna show you Slack for the time being. Now you can get it to send you a default message, which will be the name of your alarm, or again, you can get it to send you a custom message. So. So I can say, hey Slack user, someone has opened your studio door. Now, one thing I've seen a lot of people complain about is the multiple alerts, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into that a little bit later, and I'll tell you what you might wanna look out for with that. Or you can do ignore repeated actions. So for example, if you don't want it to come back in 10 minutes, we can go and do that. But for now, we'll leave that off because we wanna do a test. Now, in terms of the URL, you can pull that straight from Slack. You paste that in, and then you scroll back across, and then you can just do the IW demo test alarm, and you click create then you can literally simply just go back to the start and then click create and there we go that's now set up right there let me show you how this works then so we have this right here which opens and you'll see it just on the screen change in a second there you go less than a minute ago so we've got a hit and then we close and then again the hits went up so that's happened in the last 24 hours so that's just now and if we go to the slack channel you can see hey slack user someone's opened your studio door so that's come straight in and that's worked straight away. And I'll show you that live as well. So if we open it up, there you go. And if we close and it's done. And obviously you can tweak this accordingly. I could have made two different alerts for someone's open your door and someone's close your door. I just needed to tick one or the other so we can duplicate the alarm as I mentioned. And then we can change the context to say someone has opened your door, someone has closed your door. So we can get two different alerts. But this was just a demo for you to see. And if I show you just on the phone as well, hopefully that comes into Zoom. There you go, you can see just now that's come in. There's a notification saying someone has opened your door. 
So really easy and simple. The alarm manager is a lot more simpler than it used to be. It used to be a little bit complicated to get some of these set up, but with these three options, it's really easy and simple and customizable. Now, when you're looking to manipulate an existing alert, so for example, you can go into motion, you can see the number of devices that are set up on here. So we go into motion, we can see we have all these different ones here and then what actually happens. So we alert all the admins and if you wanna change this to some of the other ones and you can ignore repeat actions for one minute. So this gives you a really easy way that you can go and manipulate it. So if you wanted to add it for some other ones, you could just tick them and then click save and then that's it, that's done. You can edit the existing ones or if you wanna remove them, you can remove if you wish to do so. One thing people need to keep in mind is when they set this up, they tend to go with motion and person and vehicle and you'll be triggered on all three actions because that's what you've set. You've said you wanna know about motion, you said you wanna know about vehicle and you said you wanna know about a person. So for example, if I select the driveway out, you can see I have person, vehicle, vehicle of interest and animal. So if we see a person and an animal, so if we, if we drive in, you'll get a vehicle notification. If you come out of the car, you'll get a person notification. And if for that example, an animal seems to be walking across, you'll also get an animal notification as well. If I look at my front door, again, I get dual notifications at this point because I've not tweaked it. So I get a person if someone comes to the door and also I get a motion at the same time as well. So I know there's a motion and a person at the door. So you've got to keep in mind when you do get those dual triggers, think about what's actually happening. And what you can actually do is go to last triggered. So go and trigger it. If it is someone at the front door that you're getting dual notifications for, go to the front door, set it by last triggered and see what's triggering it. So you can see we have a whole bunch here that's happened less than five minutes ago. So go and see what's actually happening for that device and make sure it's filtered for that specific device as well. So you know which alerts are actually happening. And I can't remember if I've actually showed you this right at the start, but if you wanna delete any of the ones that you've made or any of the stock ones that come ready within them, you can go and select it, scroll down to the bottom. And there's two different options right here with duplicate and remove. So you can choose whichever one you want to do. For the example I've given in this video where you want to change it to open and closed, you can just simply go and duplicate it and select the different box and that's it. You're ready to go. I hope this has been useful and informative and if there's something specific you want to see a tutorial on or a how-to guide, let me know down in the comments below. For now this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.